20 years before the band Nirvana, 10 years before I was born, the Woodstock Music Festival, the concert of all concerts, the music that defined a generation. Music is a powerful element in which we recall specific memories. Do you remember the song that you received your first kiss from? Maybe it's that dance that you went to in junior high and that girl or that guy gave you that first little smooch. Well, I'm going to talk about a different song for me. Uh, it starts with a C and an F note by the band Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit, the song that led to the Here We Are Now Entertain This Generation. Today, I'm not here to talk about my generation. I'm going to talk about a generation before mine, taking us back to 1969, to an empty field in New York State where these people called hippies made a cross-country trek looking for unity, belonging, peace, and love. This is the same things that I see our students looking for in my classroom today. What if our schools, classrooms, and learning were more like the Woodstock Music Festival? What if our administrators, teachers, students, and staff were excited to be part of something awesome, thrive in a peaceful, non-judgmental environment, and accept and overcome failure? Every August, our teachers, they come to their classroom, they go in, often tiptoeing across wax floors because they don't want to make the janitorial staff mad, to prepare their classrooms for students so that they can, they can be awesome for their students and create these awesome experiences for their students. Every August, our students come running through the classroom doors, eager to learn, eager to connect, and create positive experiences for, for themselves and also for their teachers. Teachers and students show up for an awesome experience. Why do people go to rock concerts? The loud music, the mind-numbing guitar solos, the laser-stunning light shows, the 360-degree roller coasters and fireworks, those don't hurt either. I once had a friend tell me that if your ears aren't ringing the day after a rock concert, either A, the show wasn't any good, or B, your seats were terrible. The often instant gratification that our students have today within our society puts teachers at an extreme disadvantage. How do we compete? Can we compete? One of the ways that I found that we can compete is to dress up and create these classroom environments that students want to come to. For example, one of my favorite lessons was when I transformed my classroom into an 1849 gold mine. One of the things we did is build hula hoop carriages mine tracks with Legos and all kinds of different things to create that atmosphere of a mine. Inquiring minds ask, why are we doing this? Why are you decorating your class this way? And my response, you don't want to miss Monday. And this was a constant thing. Well, why are there hula hoops? You don't want to miss Monday because it's going to be a great day and you don't want to miss it. So on Monday, I met my students at the door, gave them a mine hat that they would wear into the into the mine. One kid wore a Daniel Boone ra raccoon skin, and we entered this mine that, I had, that was once a classroom the day before. We read about 1849 Gold Rush. We read about the life of a miner, and it brought the story home to the students. A few years back, a, a guy gave me a guitar just like this one to, for, for me to learn how to play. Well, after about six months, I knew that I was not going to be able to play this guitar. I, I was frustrated. It was, it was very difficult for me. So I tried to give it back to the gentleman. And the gentleman said, no, I want you to give it to somebody that will learn how to play it. So I brought the guitar to my classroom. And since then, we had, I had students use and abuse that guitar to the point in which it would not hold tune. So I decided to bring an electric guitar into my classroom, which is the same one that I had in my classroom at that time that I take to presentations. And this guitar, students learned on. I, I have students now that play gigs out in the public, some in local bars and different places, but it all started with a guitar that an old gentleman gave me so that students or that I could learn how to play. In education, as with life, 
we must begin with the mindset of being part of something awesome. In order for learning to, true learning to take place, we have to create a positive, nonviolent, nonjudgmental environment. Woodstock created this environment that focused on their core belief and mantra of making love, not war. But before they arrived to that field in New York State, they faced many obstacles, muddy roads, jammed freeways, broken down vehicles. But once they arrived, they were greeted with a peaceful, loving, and nurturing environment. There was no judgment, no fear of being judged, and one could be themselves. The pandemic. The pandemic left, left our schools with burned out teachers, unmotivated students, and pre-pandemic expectations that if we're honest with ourselves, we're not gonna meet. Previous to the pandemic, our students were facing bullying, violence from school shootings and other types of violence, and the stress of high stakes testing. Where do we go from here? What ideas, inventions, and cures are locked up inside of our students because of fear of ridicule from their peers and other teachers? It all starts with relationships. Relationships should be our focus, not our outcome. At Woodstock, they never lost sight of friendship, love, or relationships. Our schools should be the same way. We should meet students where they are. We should listen and provide adequate feedback. We should allow student choice, despite how messy and chaotic our classrooms may get. The festival in the field didn't come out off without a hitch. There was mud, there was rain. Weeks before Woodstock was supposed to start, they had to switch venues to a, a guy's f field and farm. We need to, in our schools, teach how to overcome failure versus getting the grade. We're so, so focused on the grade that we forget about the person, the relationship. So despite the heat, the breakdowns, the malfunctions that we, that we face in life, the show must go on. We must show up for our students every day. Jimi Hendrix, wonderful guitar player, Star Spangled Banner, was supposed to end the Woodstock Music Festival on Sunday night at around midnight. Well, due to the chaos of lighting crews and other malfunctions, Jimmy didn't take the stage till 9 a.m. on Monday morning. 9 a.m. on Monday morning, three-fourths of the crowd had already left, so they didn't get to witness the most powerful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner that I truly enjoy. Despite the chaos of Woodstock, the lack of resources, the food, and the water, only three deaths were reported. Two from a drug overdose, and one man was unfortunately hit by a tractor. Woodstock is still talked about 50 years later. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher, once said, you deserve what you're going through. You would rather become good tomorrow than be good today. Yes, Woodstock was gratifying, but that's not why they came. The hippies that came to Woodstock came for an experience. That experience turned into a moment, and that moment lasted a lifetime. Our schools must produce learners that will solve the complex issues of not only today, but tomorrow. And it all begins with the three lessons that I learned from Woodstock. Be excited to be part of something awesome, thrive in a non-judgmental, peace, a, a non peaceful environment, and learn to accept and adapt to failure. Thank you.